Hey there guys, I'm just a guy having fun out at the range. Let's shoot something. So as many of you guys know, I'm on my typical summer vacation and this is my collection that I've brought with me to this wonderful Los Alamos Sportsman's Club range uh, just to have some fun with uh, while I'm here on vacation. So uh, I like to do this every once in a while, shoot everything that I bring, at least one magazine through each just so that I can prove that I've shot everything that I brought. So I want to put at least one mag through each of them and just run through them. I'm not going to talk about them too much as I have in the past. You can check out other videos that I have on each of these, but more. I just want to shoot some stuff and have some fun, and you're welcome to join me. I have it organized 22s up to 9 millimeters, and then I've got some 40 caliber barrels that I may swap in um, because the 22 targets are on this side of the range, and all of the bigger steel is over on that side of the range. So we're going to start over here working right to left, starting with 22s. It's the Savage Mark II, 22 long rifle. Let's see what we can hit. Oh, it's easy. Don't know where that one went. Oh, I did hit it. There's a mark on there. <laughs> there is a mark on that last one. I just hit it too low to activate it. But Savage Mark II, I love that rifle for accuracy. Um, as you can tell, four power at 12 yards, so <laughs> not, a, not a terrible thing to shoot. Uh, not a terribly hard thing to shoot. I had that out at the rifle range, was shooting at 200 and 300 yards. Uh, 300 is just a joke, but uh, I was able to hit stuff even with that rifle. 22 caliber at 300 yards. Uh, it is fun. This one is just an ammo waster. AR-15 converted to 22 long rifle with a red dot on it. Uh, let's see how accurate this one is. I don't normally shoot the little steel. No. Yep. Yep. Well, the, uh, the dot's off, but I can still hit stuff. There it is. Yeah, that thing is a fun little plinker. I can shoot that thing all day long, but it wastes ammo because <laughs> it's semi-automatic and 22. All right, moving away from our 22 caliber rifles, we have some 22 handguns. Of course, my uh, favorite for teaching new shooters is the Ruger SR-22. So this is what my daughters use. Um, I have both the standard four and the four and a half inch barrel. And we'll just put a magazine through each. And let's do some holster work here since I've got a holster for it. Ooh. There we go. Let's try that. That double action trigger pull is messing me up. Mr. Ricocheted. There it is. Yep, there it goes. Now we're out. Okay. There it goes. That's the four inch version. Not too bad. And this is the four and a half. And we'll just put a couple of shots on the... Well, let's pull up the steel. Let's see if I can hit those skinny plates with this guy. I don't think the double action is going to be accurate. Oh, I got it. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Two for one. No way. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't normally shoot the uh, the little 22 steel with the SR22s because uh, they're not as inherently accurate. 
you've got a fixed barrel, but then the slide, which has the sights on it, is a little sloppy, and I've mentioned this in other videos, um, but it just has some inherent inaccuracy in the design that makes it not necessarily conducive for shooting two-inch plates, even at uh, 10, 12 yards. So, don't normally do that, but hey, that was a pretty good run with an SR-22. Moving away from the SR-22s... We have a Ruger Mark III, which in contrast is very inherently accurate. Um, the sights are fixed to the barrel, internal bolt, so a very, very accurate 22 handgun. Uh, haven't cleaned this one in a while, so we're going to blame any misses on that. All right, so Ruger Mark III. Let's see if it's as accurate as I claim. Uh-oh. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> and those one-inch plates at 10 yards are, are not easy, but they are fairly easy with that Ruger Mark III. I love that one. If you're thinking about a 22 for accuracy, the Ruger Mark III's or the Mark IV's, which are out now, you can't beat those. They are amazingly accurate little handguns. All right. So that's enough of the little calibers. Let's move on. I've got a couple of 380s here. Uh, starting with a Glock Model 42 in 380, and let's get some big steel up. Alrighty, 380 Glock Model 42. There we go. Very nice. Uh, Glock 42 is not my favorite. Uh, 380 is not my favorite in general. It's very small for my size of hand, but it is effective if you get the right shots. Uh, moving on, we've got a Bursa. I think there's a Thunder. Yeah, there's a Bursa Thunder 380cc. Um, this one's new. Well, new to me. New to me. A friend was trying to liquidate it, and I was more than happy to give him some dollars for a reasonable 380. Wasn't quite sure how I would like it. Uh, but I shot it a while ago, and it's actually fairly nice. Uh, so we're going to do another video just comparing a couple of 380s that I have with this one being one of the primaries. Um, it's kind of weirdly dimensioned. If you guys know me and what I like, I like a long slide on a short grip. This one has a very large handle and this little short slide on it. So it's not the aesthetic or the style that I typically like, but it works. All right, we've got some steel up for the Bursa Thunder 380. These little itty bitty sights. Ooh, missed that one. Yeah, so not too bad. Um, it's a fairly accurate 380. Um, similar recoil to other small 380s, but it does a good job, even with these really low-profile sights on here. Okay. Another newer one for me. Um, this is my, my SIG P365 XL lower and FCU, uh, but I ended up picking up a 380 365 upper. So it's the shorter P365 with a nice long grip. I was trying to use this for one of my daughters, and she's almost able to handle it, but she's limp wristing it just a little bit so the 380 doesn't cycle perfectly. She can handle the recoil, but she just doesn't have the grip strength yet. Anyway, this is essentially a P365XL with a 380 short barrel. Something like that. <laughs> so we're going to shoot some 380 out of this SIG after I get some steel up. Alrighty, P365XL 380. I can move with that one a little bit more because you've got so much more uh, handle in your hand it's a lot easier to keep that on target so yeah I like that one a lot I think this one has a lot of potential for a 380 shooter all right that's the last of our 380s so let's move into nine millimeter and the first nine millimeter that I'm going to do is actually this very one 
just going to take that 380 slide off and put my 9mm P365 XL slide back on. So now we can move to 9mm. Alrighty, 9mm P365 XL. There we go. And it's amazing how much difference there is between a 380 and a 9mm. And you don't really get that until you shoot them out of the exact same handle right after each other. It's a, there is a big difference between 380 and 9. Which goes a lot for the argument that 380 is kind of weak and not sufficient. If 9mm is the bottom of your uh, tolerable cartridges, 380 is noticeably less powerful. So whether it's, oh, it's similar diameter and similar power, there is a really big difference in the feel of that. Okay. Oh, a Glock, finally. Okay, we did have a Glock 42. I was going to say, is this my first Glock? We should have had all Glocks. All right. Glock 48, this is the firearm that I carry most often. The single stack or stack and a half 9mm. One of my favorite Glocks. All right, let's see if we can hit some steel. Glock 48. Ooh, low. Yep. For being the one that I shoot the most, that was pretty abysmal. So, uh, all right, slide didn't lock back. I don't know if that was my thumb or something else, but... Oh, well, we'll let it be what it is. We're trying to go through all these kind of quick. The next one up is a Canik. This is my first Canik, and I will say right off the bat that it is not my favorite Canik. Um, this is a, a Canik TP9DA, double action. Um, so it has a decocker on the top here, so you're supposed to tap that button to get a double action trigger press. And then it's single action after that. So when you're holstered, double action, that gives you that longer trigger press. There's some safety involved in that. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to carry this. It'll probably just be a range toy. Um, so we'll see what that is. But this is my first Canik. They're dirt cheap in many respects compared to what they're usually compared against. So we'll give it a try. I think I spent 300 bucks on this one. We'll see how it does. All right, Canik TP9DA. First shot will be double action. Let's run some steel. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, um, I mean, it's not horrible, but meh. I don't know. We'll do some more work with that one and we'll see. I'd like to get one of their nicer, the SFX series, um, just to compare because people seem to like them and they're not super expensive, which makes them a good option for a lot of other people. Yeah. There's also uh, several models that are ambidextrous. So for those that are left-handed shooters that want that capability, uh, there's some good options in the Canik if we like the Canik package, but I don't know. I haven't made up my mind on that one. Right now, I don't like it so much. Rock Island Armory, 1911 in 9mm. Got to remember this one has an external safety, so my thumb has to activate that, which is a problem for all of my other guns, that, that handheld hold that I have on it. Alrighty, 9mm, 1911. I <laughs> knocked it right off. And we're out. Woohoo. Yeah, I do like the steel frame 1911, especially in 9mm. It is just so soft shooting um, compared to the polymer frame pistols and whatnot. So I do like a good 1911, but it ruins my manual of arms for everything else that I do because of that external thumb safety. And half the time I transition from that to that, and it's hard to do. So moving on, we've got a whole string of Glocks here. Can you imagine me having a whole set of Glocks? 
Oh, these are all the ones that fit in the same Glock standard holster right there. So we're going to go from smallest to largest frame size, starting with a nice little baby Glock. This is a Glock 27 converted to 9mm, so essentially a Glock 26. Nice and tiny double stack package. 10 rounds of 9mm. Alrighty, Glock 26 essentially. Yes, Glock 26. I do really like all of the standard size Glocks. I like all the Glocks. I shouldn't even say anything. Alrighty, moving up. Glock 23 converted to 9mm, essentially a Glock 19. Alright, Glock 19 Gen 4. Okay, the full size. So this is essentially a Glock 17, though it has a custom lone wolf slide. Same length and style as a Glock 17. Yep, that one's not too bad either. A little bit longer grip gives you a little bit more control. Gen 4, Glock 35. I'm going to move to these plates that are over here to my left. Yeah, let's do some pairs. Yeah, I'm a little slow on that first shot. There we go. We can move back over here and put two more on the silhouette. left. Oh, I've got two more. Oh boy. Uh, let's see if I can hit the four inch. Nope. Come on. Oh boy. Both of those. Both of those went high, I think. Interesting. All right. Don't know how I missed those ones. All right. Did I call that one a Glock 35 or a Glock 34? I don't remember. That was a Glock 35 converted to 9mm, which makes it a Glock 34. This one is actually a Glock 34. Gen 5. One of my new all-around favorites. Got some steel up. Glock 34. Gen 5. Slowing down a little bit so that I'm not missing as much. Shall we try? Yes, let's try the four inch plate. I winged it. Yeah. I can see the mark. That was just inside, so it didn't spin the plate. Why am I hitting so far left? I don't know. Alrighty. Well, that was fun. Okay. Glock 24 converted to 9mm makes it a Glock 17L. 6 inch barrel. Glock 17L 9mm. Uh oh. Oh boy. What the failure to fire there was. I don't know what caused that uh, failure to fire. I can't find the round that I ejected when I did my tap rack. It's all factory ammunition, so I don't know what's going on there. Make sure it's not on the table here. All right. Our last handgun before we get to the 40 cals is a SIG P320X5. in here. Alrighty. P320X5. Let's get some steel up. 
Alright, let's see what we can do. Not too bad, very similar to a Glock 34, um, but in a SIG. Then our last of our 9mm is my wonderful Mectech. Very nice little Mectech, 9mm uh, carbine. I love this thing. Two power scope, let's see what we can do. <laughs> it helps if you drop the bolt. Alrighty, 9mm Mectech, let's see what we can do. Can't miss at 10 yards, 12 yards with a Mectech 9mm. Alright, for time, I think I'm going to skip the 40 cal. Uh, you can imagine what that would be like, but that was one round for everything that I brought for vacation. Fun times. Stay safe when you go to the range. Hope you get to do that soon. That was fun. We'll see you next time.